Hello. So I know last time we were working on this original Vic 20. And the soldering iron is now cool. The solder joints are cool. Oh my. I have broken a nail. Ooh. Anyway. But what we have here right now is, yes, another, another 1541 disk drive. So let's see. This one is, um, it's funny, for a, for a brown drive, chocolate brown, it is um, quite yellowed. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, so we have power, but we have no response. And I would bet hmm. interesting. So what we have here Do I see smoke coming out of there? Oh yeah, no, 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 something is not right here. Wow. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but I can see that. Frozen. Well, it's not frozen right now. Wait, wait. I don't remember having a 1541 smoke on me before. So in, t in August 2014, it's a fr I wrote, supposedly, that it was frozen. May 2015, still frozen. No response. Well, obviously, I didn't leave it plugged in. Quite as long as I just did. This would not have been a good one to leave on a torture chest. And I know you can't smell it, but I can definitely smell. There is something very hot in here. <coughs> and what is it? Well, I don't know. I just don't know it smoked. So, as I am brave and perhaps foolhardy, I will plug it in again and see if I can see where burning sensation comes from. Oh. 
I see nothing, that would be it. It may be, last time, I did send it, the command, to load the directory. And it was just after that. That I saw smoke. Well, certainly nothing in here smells very good. Well, I'm not seeing any more smoke. But I definitely feel heat coming off. I believe these are power transistors. And so much so, I really don't want to touch them. There we go. I sense heat. Hmm. Hmm. I must say, <coughs> this is not what I expected. Let me just try to spin. Oh. See, the actual drive mechanism does not seem to want to be spinning. And it doesn't when the power is turned on. The smoke did seem to come from the front here. Let's try sending another command. And then we'll try to spin the drive. does not want to do. And I definitely, I think I am smelling something, but no more smoke. But I would think that maybe these big, ow, my poor broken nail that these, um, hmm, hmm, hmm. well, <coughs> this is perplexing, this is also a time that I'm not really sure I want to connect anything else to this, perhaps it is time to check other things, other ways, because I mean, it, it's possible the power supply has gone. Oh. Oh, get a brief little. The power light now on the door flickers. It might have been doing that before. The, sorry, the power light, the, the activity light is flickering. <coughs> this is very strange. Well, it is possible the power supply is putting out too much juice. I just don't know. Well, surprise, surprise, just when you think. Another quiet little 1541. What could 
possibly go wrong. Thankfully there were no flames. And when I touch things, I do not burn myself savagely. So, this is very strange. Mind you, I've often heard that all electronic devices have smoke in them. It's only they only release it when they're unhappy. But it's all running around in there. So they say. Well, this is an interesting moment in time. It may be you actually have a drive mechanism that is bad. Or could have worse. As it happens, this drive has all the chips in sockets. So if this board works on another drive, it might be a very welcome thing. To make one of the other drives that does not have a working board work. But I suspect we might have a better idea. Once I get the board off of here, we'll see if there's any signs of the power supply cooking. It seems to be okay. Oh, do, 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 do. Well, interesting. Let's see here. I, I don't know who or why, but anyway, there are no screws holding this in, which would not give it reason to fail. Oh boy, it does stink. I think I'm going to set this aside somewhere. <coughs> oh, I know what I was going to do. Sorry, now that I have it out, I was going to try and spin this. See, this should spin fairly easily, and it does not. Like, it spins. But it is not happy. Not at all. Whew. Nothing like that electrical stench. So, I think I will be brave. And I will bring up this fine 1541 that had one of the boards that was defective. If you were watching before, we had two different drives that would not spin. On one of them, all the chips were fine, but the drive still just spun. And another one, the 6502 chip was defective. And then it spun. But then on another drive, where it appeared that one of the little chips by the 6520 chip, 6522 chip had been replaced and was in a socket, when I pushed down on it, it fixed it. 
So, that, oh. there is nothing like that electrical burn stench. So what I'm going to do is put one screw in here. Should line up nicely. Boy, that screw really doesn't want to go in there. I wonder if they have different threads. Let me grab another one. I'll try here. Okay, so that goes in. in the power and I will see what happens. Nothing. All right. Let me just have a look here. Oh. Yes. There is good reason that this does nothing. This is the one that I took the fuse out of, to replace the fuse out of the one that was missing a fuse. Great. Well, this one here, which is the one that just fried, may have popped the fuse, but I don't think so. So, what a grand opportunity. To piece things together. And no, this fuse is not blown. I know it's not blown. Because the power kept coming on. Even on the smoking drive and nothing. Ah. Okay, so we have a fuse. We have refused. And now I'll turn it on. Oh. Well, isn't that special? Okay, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time with that on there because. power light came on, the drive light flickered, and went off. Just the same way as the other one did. Which means... that there could indeed be something very, very wrong here with this board. that out of here. We'll set it just there. And we'll reach behind me and get the circuit board that we know is okay. Plug all the connectors in. We will plug all the connectors in. This may be. It's funny, there, you know, they'd always, in the old days, they'd always say, oh, it's the motherboard. The motherboard is bad. Um, of course, on a thing like this, there's really. Generally speaking, there's just one board. 
That was an IBM thing. The motherboard is bad. <coughs> so we have the board in here that we know is okay. Not now. Ooh. It's getting worse. Uh, Alright, I'm not gonna hit that. I'm not gonna oh, 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 oh. Ow, yeah. I will have to fix that. Okay. So we will get our power connector. We will pop it in here. And we will see. Okay, so the drive turned on, the drive did spin, as it should. But anyway, what I was saying about the motherboard, which was the cop-out way of describing a failure, only once in the whole time that I have tinkered on Commodore 64s did I find that everything on or in a machine was bad. Every single major chip was fried. Only once. And in that case, I would say yes. The motherboard is bad. But here we have a fuse from a bad drive. A drive that had troubles with just spinning because of the board. And we have a good board. So we put all these things together, and we look for our 1541 test demo disk. Oh, what have we got here? Okay. And we'll see what we have here. We are spinning. We are reading. We are happy. So, what the heck, I should have scissors here, but I do not, I still don't think I do, I do have pliers, I might, but you know what, I know, this is going to hurt. Yet it's gonna come off. There's nothing. <coughs> it's like, like a fingernail. <sighs> okay, that was fun. Alright, so I'll take this out. I'll put in our scratch disk. Oh. Wait just a second. The drive is flashing. Oh, I see why. I went to learn the performance test. And I made a mistake. Um, I hit an at key instead of a P key. So now, we are happy. And now, we will run. And the performance test will do its thing. So, there is trouble. with this board. There it is. But what could it be? I certainly don't want to risk hurting anything else. But what I do want to do is turn to my 
my handy dandy toolkit. Otherwise known as a Ziploc bag. And find my chip pulling screwdriver, which I do not see. So, what have I done with it? Okay, so the, the drive test is progressing. And while there are other screwdrivers in here. That one might do, but I don't like it. I like having a really strong screwdriver. And huh. it's not there. So, just a moment. I will move my now cool soldering iron. Oh, it's still warm. Ah. Oh, okay. There is my chip pulling screwdriver. So, what I'm going to do, because I essentially believe this board to be. Distress, but I'm hoping it didn't fry the chips. Okay, so the disc is testing. Okay, so that has passed. I'm going to yank all the chips out of here. And the board I have, there's a round chip. There. The board I have here that I can test things in does not have everything in sockets. This one here that I cannot trust does have everything in sockets. So I will be able to test some of these chips almost immediately and some I will have to set aside. But definitely I think it is rare, but I think I have found a board that may not be worth salvaging, or attempting to. At least, not at this juncture. Now, is the power supply sending it too much power? Maybe. I'm certainly not going to go plugging a whole bunch of stuff into that. For example, I'm not going to take a good board that I know is good, such as the one that's on here, and stick it into the other. Stick anything onto that. This reminds me of... The days of the Commodore 64 power supplies that could fry and damage machines. I'm just having a little trouble with this chip. This is one of the ones I've actually not been able to take out before because they've not been socketed. And this one does seem to be giving me a bit of a run. Wah. Boy. Well, maybe I'll go to the 6502 for the moment. This too will be challenging. I took out the round chip, and maybe I should not have. Okay, I'm, good. I'm using the rocket back and forth. Okay. 
combination of rocket back and forth and pry. So, we have one more. The capacitor is in my way. But as this board may be dead, I will bend it out of the way. Okay. I hear things are happening. So, if some of these chips have been damaged, it is unlikely that they will damage the other board. It just, it just won't work. What will happen? I hope. <coughs> so, as it is more comfortable for me to work on these chips from this side, I will turn this around. And I will turn it off. And I will take out the cables. No, I haven't all these out. Okay, so I think the first thing to try is not that one. I think the first one we will try is the 6502. The brains of the operation. So, I'll put that here. And I will ever so gentle. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna put at least one more screw into the board. Assuming this will go. It pours. Okay, we are more secure. So, turn on the drive. It's all good. Gently go at the 6502. Maybe I'll try and do a video of this. Okay, so the 6502 is good. I will put by my glasses this 6502, which may be good. I will carefully, carefully insert. And we're in, and we look good, and I will turn on the drive. Okay, and it responds favorably, and of course, it says device not present. Why? Because it's not connected. So now that the drive is connected, okay. and it loads the directory, and life is good. Now, <coughs> we'll turn this off, and we will grab the iPod Touch, and we'll see if we can't do a quick video of a chip removal. So here we are. We're going for the 6522. Careful not to hurt the capacitor. I give a gentle pry on top of the ROM chip. And then pry gently down. This one looks like it's going to go okay. I gently rock and roll. Aha! 16522. And I will put that with 
the 6502 that just came out. Now, <clears throat> I'm not sure if I can do this with one hand, but I will try. So here is the inside of the 1541. We just took a 6522 out. I'm going to attempt to put this one in one-handed. I like to get it in on one side ever so perfectly, and then give it a push, a secure push. And then I look at the connectors on both sides. And indeed, it looks like it is in. So, 6522 is on board. I turn it on. And I try and load the directory. Oh, 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 oh. what happened? And, yeah. I tried to load the directory. No response. Aha! So, I intended to think that that's 6522, which now is being difficult about coming out, is defective. I'm thinking. So, I'm going to put this one over here. And now I'm going to get another 6522. I'm going to carefully line it up, stick it in, look at the pins, they're all good, turn them on. It fires up as it should. It loads the directory. Excellent. Now, the only other two that I can check right now are these two ROM chips. Hello. No, I hate when you get down to the very end and they just don't want to come out. Okay, so there is the round chip. Nine zero one two two nine zero zero five. Do 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 do. This one is a 901229-03. But it is the replace it is it's it should go in there. I guess it's just an earlier version. So we check. Push, we look, we're good, we turn on, the drive does its thing, we try and load the directory, it loaded, it was fine, alright, we turn the drive off. We gently pry one other ROM chip, this one. Where are my other glasses? <coughs> this one has better bifocals. 325302 1. We look over here and we find that that is not the one. 302. No, 325302 3, 1. Uh, okay. So we put that in. We double check. The drive comes on. It loads the directory.
and that is good. So, this, well, it's a bad chip. Goes into the bad chip and That's about all I have to say about that. So, nothing like a smoking 1541. We will see you again.